In the last lesson, we created a simple Hello World window using PySide. And while this demonstrated the basics of PySide and how to create a simple dialog, it really doesn't offer any practical experience on creating tools for Maya by using PySide. In this lesson, we will be creating a tool that will allow you to generate polygon primitives. This is still a very basic tool, but it will explore some additional concepts such as layouts and signals and slots inside of PySide. Just to take a look at this tool, the finished product, I've created a shelf button for it. When I click on this button, it brings up a dialog window with four buttons, cube, sphere, cone, and cylinder. When I click on the buttons, you'll see a primitive generated of each type. Like I say, this is a very simple tool, but it will cover some key concepts. So I'll open up Charcoal Editor and we can get started. I've already got my imports. You'll remember these from the last lesson. So I'm importing Qt Core, Qt GUI, as well as Wrap Instance. And from Maya, I'll be importing Maya commands as well as open Maya UI. The Maya main window function is unchanged from the last lesson. And if you recall, this will simply return Maya's main window Q widget. This will allow us to parent the tool to Maya's main window. For this tool, I'll be using a new class, which will extend on the Q dialog class from Qt. So to start with, I'll create a new class and call it primitive UI. And again, this is going to be extending the Q dialog class. So Qt GUI dot Q dialog. Next, I'll create my initialization method. And I'll be passing in the parent widget. By default, this is going to be passing in the Maya main window. So it's going to call the Maya main window function. Next, I have to call my parent class and I'll be passing in the parent object. Now, because I'm extending the QDialog class, I have access to all of the QDialog methods. This will allow me to do things such as change the window title and change the window attributes. So I'm going to start by setting a new window title. And I'm just going to call this primitives. Next, I'm going to set window flags and make this window a tool window. That way it'll stay on top of Maya, even on OS X. And the flag I need to give it is qtcore.qt.tool. And this will make it a tool window. I'm also going to set an attribute that will tell Qt to delete the window when it is closed. And I'll explain why I'm doing this in just a second. So again, I'll be passing in qtcore.qt.wa underscore delete on close. So this is a window attribute. So I'm just going to move down and out of my class. And I'm going to create some code that will allow me to display the window. So if name equals double underscore main, I'm going to create an instance of this UI. And then I'm going to call UI.show. And when I run this, I'll see that a window is being created. Obviously, there's no buttons yet, and this window is far too big, but this is the base window for our tool. I'm just going to close that. And now I'm going to demonstrate one of the problems with PySide. I never experienced this working with PyQt, but with PySide and Maya, it's definitely a problem. 
So what I'm going to do is just execute this code about five or six times in a row. And I'm going to get to a point where Maya is going to throw an error. So you can see that an error is now being displayed inside of Charcoal Editor. What this is saying is there's an attribute editor, no attribute win event. When this happens, I can no longer create any more windows and any of the windows I've created can't be closed. This fundamentally breaks Maya. And to work around it, you have to close Maya and restart. Following a restart of Maya, I can show how to avoid this problem. The first thing I need to do is make sure that I have the set attribute delete on close flag. This will force the tool to be deleted. The next thing I'm going to do is put a try accept statement in my main code. And this is just going to be a call to UI close. And my accept is going to be pass. What this is going to do is try and close the window if it exists. And if it does, it's going to be deleting the window when it closes it before it tries to create the new window. Now, really, this is only useful for testing purposes or when you're developing your tools, but it will help you work around the problem and constantly having to restart Maya just so you can continue your development. Carrying on with the creation of our UI, I'm going to create a new method, and this is going to be called create layout. And this is where any of the layout code is going to be placed. And if you recall, we'll be creating four buttons and we'll be putting them into what would be considered a column layout if you were using Maya's native UI code. So I'll start by creating a button and this will be a cube button. I'll be calling button. I'll be giving it the name of the button. So this is the label you're going to see on the button. And this is just going to be cube. If I run my code, you're not going to see any changes. So I'll just close my window. And this is because I'm not calling the create layout method. So I'm just going to move that into my init method. When I run that, I get an error. And that's just because I haven't put the self variable at the front of this method call. Now when I run it, again, we're not going to see anything. And this is because the button hasn't been added to the layout yet. So what I'm going to need to do next is actually create a layout. I'm going to create a main layout. And this is going to be a QVBox layout. Next, I'm going to add the widget, this is the cube button, to that layout by calling add widget. And I'll pass in the cube button. Finally, I need to add the main layout itself to my primitive UI dialog. So I'll be calling set layout and passing in the main layout. Finally, when I run this, you'll see that I now have a button on screen. You'll see this big border around it, and we can take care of that by changing the content margins as well as the spacing. So to reduce the margins, I'm just going to call main layout dot set contents margins. And now I'm going to be passing in values for the top, left, bottom, and right. And I'm just going to make this all a value of two. When I run this again, you'll see that the window is much closer to the button. Next, I'll add in the remaining three buttons. So I'm just going to duplicate this line of code in Charcoal Editor, and that's just Control D. Now I'm going to create a sphere button and give it the label sphere. A cone button. And finally, a cylinder button. And 
And with these, I have to add them to the layout as well. So again, I'm just going to duplicate the add widget line. And now I can pass in my sphere. I have name wrong here. This should be cone, not code. Finally, cylinder. When I execute the code, you'll see that all four buttons are now in the tool dialog. And as I move this around, the buttons are repositioned inside the window. But this isn't exactly the behavior we want. So we want these buttons to be closer together and we want them to all be pushed to the very top. We don't want them to be evenly spaced within the window. So to fix the spacing, I'll just call main layout dot set spacing. And this is the spacing in between the buttons. And I'm going to set this to a value of two. And finally, I'm going to add what's known as a stretch at the bottom. So add stretch. When I execute the code now, all of the buttons will be kept at the top of the window. So this is our desired behavior. One thing to make note of is that the controls that you add to a layout are added in order. So my cube button's at the top, followed by my sphere button, cone, cylinder, finally the stretch. If you change the order of any of these, the layout inside your window will reflect those changes. So now we have a problem. We have our buttons, we have our layout set, but when I click on the buttons, nothing's happening. So there's no objects being created. And that's what we're gonna take care of next. We're gonna be creating the connections that will allow us to link the button press to specific commands. Inside of my editor, I'm gonna create a new method called create connections. And this will be our first look at signals and slots using PySide. For the most part, we'll just be glossing over the code here, and we'll go into more detail on how signals and slots work in a later lesson. For now, we're just going to be connecting the button clicked signal with method calls inside of our class. But currently we don't have any methods to generate these primitives. We'll take care of that right now. For this, I'm going to be using class methods. I'll start by declaring this as a class method, and I'll name my first method makeCube. And this will simply be calling the Maya polycube command. So commands.polycube. Next, I'll duplicate this code three times. And I'll create class methods for make sphere. This will call polysphere as well as make cone. And this will call polycone. And finally, make cylinder. And you guessed it, this is going to call polycylinder. Finally, we're ready to make our connections and finish off this tool. So once again, we're going to be connecting the button clicked signal with each of the methods that we've created below. So when the cube button is clicked, it's going to call the make cube method. Starting with our cube button, I'm going to take our cube button instance, call clicked dot connect, now I'm going to specify the method that we're going to be calling. And this is going to be the class method, primitive UI dot make cube. For the sphere button, I'll do the same thing. Call clicked dot connect. We'll be doing primitive UI dot make sphere. I'll just duplicate this twice. 
I'll do our cone button as well as our cylinder button. I'll be calling make cone and finally make cylinder. And that should be it. When I execute this code, we'll see our primitives dialog displayed. And now when I click on my cube button, nothing happens. Why is nothing happening? And that's simple. That's because I'm not calling my create connections method. So right below create layout in the init method, I'll create my connections. Let's try this once more. I'll create my dialog, click cube, and you'll see the cube has been created. If I click sphere, I get a sphere, cone, as well as a cylinder. And that's it. And with that, we conclude this PySide lesson.